the standpoint, when we first was in the project, there were servicemen in. You couldn't move in Parkside and be a single parent. After the riot took place, they started letting single parents move in the project. Okay, before that, there was white and black. It was mainly white with a few blacks living in it. Right. Okay? After the riot, they made a change in policy. And more blacks moved in and the whites moved out. Okay? At that time, the projects was going along. We, and so that you can get this, they used to go to a school called Hamilton. Hamilton, they was having problems with the kids going up to the school. We had a social service there that, that organized the tenants to fight for buses. So the kids didn't have to walk through the white neighborhoods because the white people at times were sick for dogs. On. Okay? So I was working in social service and Mr. King was working in social service, working for NSO. We organized the tenants there to have a set in at the Board of Education to fight for the buses for the kids. All right? And the social service helped the tenants organize and get themselves together and function and put together some organization there so that the kids could get various jobs. Some of the parents went to work at Hamilton and Jackson Junior High. And then the projects evolved in that manner. Okay. Okay. Some of us went in on and worked for the city. I ended up managing Parkside. Okay. John King ended up probably managing and working there. Okay. And it went on from there until they finally decided, the government decided to switch the concept. Okay. They downsized the projects, they turned all the big ones down. Right. And that's where we're at kind of right now. So is it true or false, Parkside was the official grandfather of all the uh, public housing? projects. It was the actual, the first one before I, the other one came. I can't say that. I say the first project probably was Sojourner Truth. I don't know for sure. Uh -huh. Sojourner Truth, Herman Gardens, and Parkside. Okay. And then they brought in Jeffries and Brewster, from oh. my understanding of this thing. Okay. I could be a little wrong, okay. but I know it kind of functioned in that way. That was the oldest project. Right. I believe called Mr. Ford, Henry Ford donated the land that Herman Gardens is on to the city of Detroit to build those projects. Oh. Okay? Uh -huh. So you had Herman, Parkside, Sojourner Truth. What about okay. Buffalo? The Buffaloes came along later too, but they came in like the rest. The Je thinking, how about the Jeffries, the Brewster? The Jeffries them came probably right after Herman and Parkside, then they built Jeffries downtown. Okay. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of whites living in Herman and Parkside. The Jeffries was built more for the blacks down in the inner city. Okay. Okay? And that's my, the kind of concept that I got from So is it safe to say Parkside was the official military uh, housing project? What, what, what they did was a lot of the military, they gave them preference. Okay. Because I was an Air Force. Okay. A lot of the time, they didn't have projects out there for the black military. Right. And, they were, and the, the guys would tell each other, you could go down to Parkside and they would let us in because we were military. They couldn't, they couldn't discriminate against the blacks in the military. Okay. Okay, so when we went down, even though it was white, we could get in. Okay. And that's how we got in. Because you're military. Right, but they did let some other blacks in because some of the factory guys, but they had to be married, okay, before they would let them in. They did not stop letting single women in. They didn't kick them out if the husband left later on, but you could not initially move in unless you were married. Okay. Okay? I come in in 63. We didn't have to have a father. Uh, that was that. Well, I don't know how they did it then, but that's what the concept they told us. Okay. A lot of them got that. Maybe some people got in and knew something. But that was the concept that they were telling us was going on. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because I didn't really move into 65. Okay. No, I was in before 65. I'm sorry. Okay. I was well, in about 60, well, 63. So, Horace, you were 63, so 63. Mr. Frank, you so had to I be before. I was around 63, too, because I went into service in 61, and when I came down, I got, I, I was stationed at Selfridge Field, and I got into uh, Parkside. So it had to be 62 or 63, I got it. Okay. And um, what kind of experience, personal, besides, uh, uh, what, what, okay, what memories would you take of Parkside that you still would have with you today? It was one of the, it was one of the more nicer projects. They took care of it very well. They did the maintenance. They had the park civil you had all the amenities of being in the suburb. We had parks, we had Chandler Park there. The park was kept up. We had a swimming pool there. We had a full-size gym there. Mm -hmm. A lot of, even some of the crunk boxes uh, right. would come down through that boxing gym. Boxing. And then they moved off and got, what's the name when they got the, uh, yeah, went to Crunk Boxing after that. 
Then you had the dances. Right, we had well, we organized that when we went to NSO and we, like Mr. King and myself. We had the youth court. Yeah, we would bring the kids and we organized them. Yeah. We had them have a, their clubs and stuff. Mm -hmm. They organized and had their little dances. We would keep the gym open for them. When they closed the gym, we had keys. We would open it up for them. <laughs> okay. So they got to, they had a gym when other people was talking. Their gym was closed. Yeah, they'd come over there. We would volunteer and open up the gym for them in Park right. Side. Because we had that social activity going. Right, because it was always something to do at Parkside event-wise. I'm telling right. you, everything. I mean, I remember the swimmobile, the bookmobile. I mean, well, you we name it. Well, we did that. We took the kids to basketball games. We took them out to the piston game. Right. right. Hay rides. Yeah. I we remember We took them to a bull, mm -hmm. uh, to, a, to a, a, a rodeo. A rodeo. The bull got out of it. The bull jumped the fence and ran down the hole. The <laughs> kids out there <laughs> took them. <laughs> they out there now seeing the kids running, they say the bull loose. Here come the bull running down the hall. We had to tell the kids, get <laughs> How many kids do you you think that you had to take with you that day? You took we, a whole bus? We would take maybe 20, 30 kids. Uh-huh. Sometimes we'd have a bus load. We take them to rodeos, we took them all. Uh, I had to they had a vet club. I had a vet club come in and mentor some of the kids. Mm -hmm. Come in and take them in the vets and ride them around. Uh, okay. that was uh Barrel. Barrel. Joe Lewis's uh, grandson who ran for mayor, he had a vet club. He came in and picked up the kids and rode. Right. So we did a lot of that for him. And I, I heard that we have, well, what we, who we call celebrities today, I think that um, a whole lot of outsiders uh, that it wasn't necessarily uh, residents of Parkside um, played a part with the wreck. They came in with the entertainment. I heard we had boxers. We had a boxer. We had a whole box. They had the boxing match, the Golden Gloves that one year. Uh huh. And we had it right there in the gym. And I heard you had like, um, you know, uh, what was that? Motortown back then, not Motown. Um, you had a whole lot of entertainers that came in and did little uh, shows Sammy or whatnot. Sammy Davis came over. I heard Sammy, Sammy Davis. Sammy Davis came over when he was alive. He was uh -huh. over at the Windsor Casino. Uh huh. And they went and got Sammy and brought him over. And I heard uh, Joe Lewis. I'm not sure because I, I thought he was deceased. But dealing with the uh, the boxing aspect of it came over to uh, no uh, over the fellow that managed uh, Tommy Hearn. Oh, okay, that's who came over. Yeah, he had he worked in the gym for in the basement. He took the guy's place in the basement. He got sick and he worked there for a while. Oh, okay, and that's then who. Then he went to Crunk. Oh, but he was Manuel Stewart. Okay, yeah, okay, Man that's that's who they were yeah, trying to say. Manuel was in the basement for a while. Uh huh. With the boxers and doing the boxing thing. Right. I can't think of the fellow's name that he took his place for a while and then he went over to Crown. Okay, Emmanuel Stewart had a, a restaurant, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Emmanuel had all the top boxers here in the city. Wow. Okay. Wow. But that's about the gist of Parkside. Right. Gotta love it. <laughs> and um, last but not least, because I mean I, I appreciate this footage, I really do. Um, last but not least, who was the security guard? What was his name? I heard Mr. Otis. I That's heard it. No, it was Otis. You hit it right on the head. Mr. Otis. And then we organized the tenants and they and they managed, and they did their own thing. Okay. The tenants became guards. Really? Right. Okay. So thank you so much and we love you for this. Okay. Thank you. And God bless. All right. Bye bye.